Good morning, how are you? Classroom, it's too long to say. How are you engaging a healthy mind, body, spirit classroom? I could do it, I could do it. This tongue works miracles, don't even go there. This is a lot. Hmm. Did you have bets on what I would start with with my pharmaceuticals? I bet you thought it was Ozempic. I mean, it's not that I didn't think I was going to start with Ozempic. I did. Did think I was going to start with it. But I didn't. I started with the pill that is known simply as the pill. So a pharmaceutical that is so famous, so ultra famous, it's got a one name, first name only. It is the most common name of a prescription medication pill and they own it. Just like that, they own it. The pill, it is the pill. Not a pill, it's the pill. I'm sure that these opioids tried to grab the name, the pill. No, it's not a pill, you opioids you are simply a pill maybe more than one pill but you're still a pill this is the pill the pill now in all of my classes i work to sort of have an overriding theme and our engaging a healthy mind body spirit is joining us in the overriding theme and right now the overriding theme is eugenics. But then I realized many of you don't even know what that means, which, but I'm sure all of you do know what it means to, and some of you probably don't even know what it means to, to I put pathogenic now. That's what it's pathogenic. That's what they, cause that's what they care about. They don't care about eugenics. They care about pathogenics now. Death and disease. Isn't that true? Pathogenic not eugenics eugenics was a superior race now they're looking for who's the inferior race that's what we want to do and eliminate them we don't care about superior races in fact it probably doesn't give us any advantages to pay attention to them right so now emphasis is on pathogenics getting rid of those pathogens which by the way most of our disease is probably held up in pathogens. Uh, I'm not a firm believer at all that STDs are lifetime diseases. And in fact, I'm not even convinced that AIDS is a lifetime disease. I'm more convinced that all those pills that you have to take for AIDS, I'm more convinced that those are... doing the killing. We do know when you're on constant medication that you reduce your lifespan by 20 years, 20 years. And as we speak about in positive psychology, we want to know how good are those years though? If I'm 20 years less, how good are they? Well, you're, let's start with it. You're on medication for the rest of your life. And by the way, nobody sells medication anymore unless you're on it for the rest of your life, right? Oh, ADHD, rest of your life. Sorry, Ritalin, rest of your life. Blah, blah, blah. Day 120. Almost lost my dog. Stick is going to give it just the resistance it needs. Okay, so but what's so interesting and so now theoret we're going to talk about this theoretically, right? Actually, I should just leave that up there. So when we're talking about eugenics, if you if you weren't here for the earlier classes, there you go. We defined eugenics. So we're getting our 
engaging a healthy mind, body, spirit classroom into a mindset with our other classrooms on this topic of eugenics. So very quickly, you always EU always means good. Eugenics is good genes. All right, good genes. So when we're talking about the pill, we are talking about helping us with better life, with a better life. And that's what I wanted to concentrate on for today, for our introduction into pharmaceuticals and the pill. So I did some research on who is, oh, I probably didn't have that up there, did I? Give me one sec. I found out I can get some music on this thing and not get a hit for it. So that's what I'm gonna do. I have this on one of my videos and I can't remember which one. <clears throat> no, it's on DIY. That's what it is on our DIY. I think, it, yeah, and it was on Thursday. So it was in 119. Therapy for me came at a time.
if I wrote this song, I would have flipped it like this. Swizzy, do you love me? Are you riding? Say you'll never ever leave from beside me. Cause I want ya, and I need ya, and I'm down for all of my feelings. So deep in the feelings, no, this ain't feeling like me. Can't control my anxiety. got my slides up that I want just wanted to took me a long while to put this together because I was completely unfamiliar with the history of the pill so um but more than that for this class what we really want to get to is the um how revolutionary this was and I want to keep that word up there I want to keep you focused on this idea of eugenics right and historically the concept of eugenics preceded the pill and there was great resistance to this pill but likely the great resistance to it had more to do with controlling the reproductive system than it had to do with the morality of sex and reproduction itself. Now, this is just um, a theory, right? So this is a theory. And, but when you see the movement that eugenics took, which, as I wrote, was more of a uh, there it is. I can't see it. Was more of a, an approach that would probably be more definitive of pathogenics, right? So focusing on disease. Why wouldn't geneticists? be focused on disease. That's where the money is. So we're not interested in making better genes. If I made better genes, I would put medical doctors out of business. And with medicine and health, there is great power. The power absolutely is highest in being able to have reproductive control so the movement for women to have reproductive control I suggest the resistance came because the powers that be wanted to have that reproductive control and the scientists and the medical doctors wanted to have the reproductive control. And in fact, they had reproductive control 
likely to a great extent, it was just unknown, right? It was just kept secret. I'm reading up more on these scientists, but one of the things, I'm not going to take a look at the scientists just yet. I want us to, to contemplate this question a little bit more. So the theory is, so I'm going to bring it back to the last doctor. This last doctor here, whose name is Gregory Pincus, and you could read some of the information on Gregory Pincus. So this is actually the last contributor that I'm going to talk about, and now I'm talking about him first, right? But he was, he was doing in vitro fertilization prior to the advent of the pill. If science has progressed to the extent of being able to take a Petri dish, put a woman's ovum in the Petri dish, and put a needle of a sperm inside that ovum, that's what we're talking about, about in vitro fertilization. It's fertilizing in a Petri dish is what it is, in vitro fertilization. So putting the egg in there, and then you literally take a needle and inject the egg with sperm. And a lot of times more than one sperm, and this is the reason why we have such a high rate of multiple births with in vitro fertilization. And also the concept of if these lives are viable in a Petri dish, but you only want one baby, what am I supposed to be doing with these lives? So we have real moral questions, these, these live, and, and really, honestly, uh, the, the question and the emphasis and the focus has been on a woman's right to decide for herself, and we have taken off our attention, off of what the medical industry has been doing with those extra cells. It's a, it's a hidden problem right, with those extra viable embryos is what they are. Viable embryos, which means that they are a living cell that's not allowed to reproduce. What are you going to do with that life? And again, <clears throat> the focus, because we're on pathogenics, has really been on women's right to be able to take control independently of their own bodies. This is something that lawmakers ha have done continuously historically, right? Is that they gave Indians the right to make their own laws, to be independent, as long as they were dependent on the United States. How do you make someone dependent on you? You don't give them a right, their own constitutional rights, a right to move freely about the land in order to fulfill your life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, right? So the bigger picture here I want you to think about is that the question wasn't whether or not science had the ability to produce the pill. It was the politics. And more than the politics of it, the moral politics of it, or the moral dilemma of it, it really came down to money. It came down to money and control. Power is what, if I had the power over my own body and you didn't have the power to tell me that my power to decide was immoral, you didn't have the power to do that, then I would be able to freely make those decisions and become independent of the system. And that was the fear with the pill. So the biggest thing about this pill that we need to understand is not the moral dilemma of it as much as the control feature of it and how few rights women had prior to the pill, how different their rights were to men. And so 
there was this constant fear that women always had when having sex that it might produce children. Think about that. Think about the pathogenics of that. Think about the diseased mind that a woman might have about producing children. Not because science couldn't do it, allow them independence of the system, but because they wouldn't do it. On moral grounds? No, not on moral grounds. And Gregory Pincus actually did discuss, no, maybe it wasn't Pincus, it was somebody else who was a devout Catholic. So see, <clears throat> And it was the person that they needed in order to help continue. But a devout Catholic who had a sensible reason for, I have to look that up, being on board with the pill. And all of these were social issues. So let's take a look at, okay, are we creating better well-being through our ability to be able to control, to have control over rep our reproductive life, right? Are we creating eugenics or pathogenics? By taking away that control from men, It becomes eugenics for women. By keeping the control with men, it was pathogenic. And that should be genics too. Sorry about that. Eugenics and pathogenics, okay? Diseased genes is what the system wanted to keep in place continuously for minorities. Your inability to be independent when making health decisions. And in that way, we see what a reversal of time, the repeal of Roe versus Wade has done for women. What it's done is it's put back the control of genetics in the hands of our medical doctors who happen to be substantially white men. That's what you've done. You've taken away the independence of women to be able to make their own choices regarding their reproductive cycles. It's no different. If we take one step backwards, we'll go back to the Catholic Church and say uh, that we can't have any contraception at all. Is that eugenics? Does that help the well-being of individuals? Or is it pathogenic? And it's so important for you to put yourself in the mindset of how debilitating the concept is that every time you have sex, you could produce a child. I produced a child on the first or second time I had sex. Our bodies are made to desire sex very strongly during the time of the month when we are most fertile. So if you can't control yourself sexually, the likelihood that you are going to get pregnant is much greater simply because you're in that period of I can't control myself, time to make a baby. See? And now, who is taking control over that? I mean, look at, look at our legislature. Look at our Supreme Court. Evangelicals all over the board telling us that we need to be dependent on them for our moral compass. It is just archaic. And that's what they talk about then in my um, research on 
the pharmaceutical that we're studying, the first pharmaceutical and our engaging healthy mind, body, spirit that we're talking about, the pill. Oops, those are the titles. So, the first person that we're going to take a look at is Margaret Sang Sanger. Now, let me take, let me, um, just for organization's sake, we're going to put Margaret Sanger in the area of eugenics, not pathogenics. She is trying to give women independence. And there's something about her that I, um, because I was doing, you know, when you do research on the spur of the moment. You might miss things. I might miss things. that might be considered somewhat important. I don't think that's a good color either. I really need want a color that just stands out. What's the matter with having, I, I don't understand. No comprendo. That one doesn't stand out. I just can't decide on a light color or a dark color. Let me try a dark one. Nope. It's going to be good enough. Okay, so we want to have the concept of Sanger being in a promoter of good genes and not bad genes. So uh, some a little bit of background. Nurse who worked with some of the poorest women in New York. She was friends with Catherine McCormick from the suffrage movement. Catherine McCormick had money and had listened to speeches about um, reproductive rights that Sanger gave in her pursuit of this issue, furthering the re reproductive rights of women, right? Uh, she also became uh, vice president of, oh no, I'm sorry. Yeah. Planned Parenthood of Greater New York removed Sanger's name from building for her support of what they called eugenics. Now, from what I understand, Ted Cruz was also a big name in pushing for the removal of her name from a monument, claiming that she was somebody who was for eugenics. Now, she was certainly somebody who was for better genes. She wasn't for getting rid of pathogenics. And those two concepts are different. Now, I'm not saying that I'm for the eugenics movement, but I am for a well-being movement. I'm not necessarily, but we're not splicing... We're splicing genes with the emphasis on disease is what we're doing. We don't need to be splicing genes at all. You don't need to be doing anything with people's genes. And this is the thing that Margaret Sanger really brought to the forefront um, without a lot of understanding and support, right? I want better genes. Who doesn't want better genes? But Margaret, Sa Margaret Sanger would never have been a fascist for the dismissal of working at changing our genes. Is it emphasizing pathogenics? And if it is, it's keeping doctors in business. 
Is it emphasizing eugenics, good genes? And I've been an example of this in almost probably 900 videos now. I've been an example of good, of how you can turn bad stress into good stress, right? So somebody's gonna take this video, put my face on a monument and then take it down saying she was a pro eugenics because that's the divisiveness of idiots. And I believe Ted Cruz led that idiot campaign. I don't know. I'm getting it, you know, quickly. So I didn't have a t chance to, to double check the, the resources on that. I would like to share with you right now, though, what I did pick up rather quickly that I thought that that brings us home and that I didn't put on her slide. And that was why was she interested? Why was Margaret Sanger so interested in these poor children in inner city New York? And interested in women having reproductive independence. Let's take a look at Am I am I up in there? I am. I can't do that. Sorry. Okay, I think it's right here, but I'm not 100%. So let me... Oh, that's right. I know where it is. All right, we're going to do a backup here. Okay. Okay, what? Okay. Remember, keep that keep that idea in mind. Is she really focusing on What's, what's the focus here? Because it is subtle, right? What's the focus? Is the focus here good genes or is the focus here pathogenes, bad genes, right? So, so taking our knowledge of language and just really demonstrating how important it is that we have an understanding of these words that we are using, right? So... Turn a couple things off here. Keep our eye on the ball, which is eugenics. Guess we're going to keep it right about there. And then so this was a movie that was put out by PBS, The American Experience, all right? And this is, the only way that I could get this was all I could get was a transcript of this. Let me show you. Something else. Okay, so here is, uh, what I did was I downloaded this article, right? So, but here is the website, all right? 
And if I go and do what? Oh, that's not what I was doing. There is a drop down here somewhere. There we go. So you can see here now where I got this from. So an American experience, there's a drop down menu here, which is to view it, right? Then there's credits and there's the transcript. This is not available here. And I don't know why. I don't know why this movie isn't available. It's, it should be available on Amazon. It says it's not available in your area. So it's not able to get the movie, but I was able to get the transcript. All right. So if you go to American Experience, oh, there's a transcript. Duh. Um, from PBS, you can see at the top there, you can find that movie, The Pill. And if you're in a different area than I am, you likely will be able to also see that movie. I was unable. I don't know how they were able to get an hour's worth or 58 minutes worth of video and a very, what appeared to me to be a very short transcript, but they did. All right, so now I want to pull up my marked up copy. Okay. <clears throat> So here they start with some of the information about just background, right? Now they're talking about Margaret Sanger and here is her grandson, Alex Sanger. And this is the part about it that becomes a little bit sketchy, right? It doesn't clearly say this is Margaret Sanger, although it is. My grandmother's childhood was poverty stricken and painful. She grew out of a world where her mother was pregnant 18 times, 11 children, seven miscarriages, and was dead at age 49. This is not an uncommon story in the 19th century. So that's Margaret Sanger's mother, as you can see, right? So, so again, I'm getting this information. I'm a, I'm a believer that you need to have the information, you know, a lot more than one time, three times actually be able to, and I'm, and I'm just getting this information like two times. So so I'm not, it's not all clear in my head. Yeah, all right? That's why I highlighted this, and this is the reason why I'm showing you. Now remember, the emphasis here is on the background of this, of why this movement became so desperate, and then highlighting the concept that it appears, theoretically, they had the knowledge to give women this type of independence long before they gave it to women, keeping women in desperate situations that leave them feeling negative, undesirable feelings about what? Family and children and sex. You fools, you absolute fools. You think that you can keep women, what? Chaste, pure, by taking away their reproductive rights when all they ended up with in their heart and soul was a desperation to never have sex. Nice job, you people running the show. You clearly, if Gregory Pincus is doing in vitro fertilization, you clearly can produce a pill. Not only that, but he knew like that what he needed to do. Suppress progesterone. He created a pill just like that. How would he know that? How would he know decrease progesterone? This is Dr. Neferich. We are going to come back here tomorrow while we are engaging not our bodies in, in this classroom as much as our minds and our spirits. What Spirits in women, were they crushing 
purposefully to maintain a privileged position over women's reproductive rights. And now here they come again. Da I want you to think about this kind of desperation of women never wanting to have sex because you believe after three or four of this, you believe every time you have sex, it's going to produce a child. If not this time, for sure the next time. One in two chances. And your husband's freely banging away on you without any contraception at all. One of these guys, a drunk and, and a guy who wants it every single day with his wife, a drunk, every single day, banging away on her without contraception. One child after another. That's what you're talking about when you are taking away choices because you think you know the moral high ground for women. I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed at, at how far back this country has stepped. This is Dr. Annette Farovich. Thanks for listening. We are here in the classroom engaging a healthy mind, a healthy body, and a healthy spirit. Mostly a healthy mind and, and, and spirit. The body comes in the DIY psychologist. And I made a whole bunch of wonderful things. I'm going to show you what I made in DIY. If I remember, I forgot about Black History Month and my book list. You know how that goes. Dr. Annette Farovich, thanks for joining me. Uh-oh.